Um, yeah, so the first thing uh, where that impacts is we actually wanted as little change as possible within the supply chain, right? Mm -hmm. Editors, buyers, production timelines. So actually, while we're showing to the consumers, you know, showing now, you know, buy now, wear now, or see now, buy now, wear now, yep. um, we're actually showing at that same time a season ahead for the press and the buyers, so there's no change there oh, for the okay. bulk of it. Yeah, so th so during in February we showed a spring show, right. but for the buyers and the editors, um, we 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 had a, we had a, a fall experience, so they were buying on the normal calendar. So that's the first part. So that's actually some people get confused about that. So there's actually no real change on that side. By the time you show it to the consumer, though, they haven't seen it before, so that's fresh for them when the goods are hitting the floor to align with the advertising campaign. That's part of it of no change. What we did do, though, is is this also gives us the, the time to kind of go through the season, see what some of the weather patterns are, see what some of the, if, if we missed anything. Um, so what we did do is we actually went back into sampling and production and design on some other items um, that we felt we had missed based on, on, on the spring shows and put those into work in November, December, and we actually had a 10-15% increase in orders based on about 20 new styles that we that we put out there, based on things that we thought, we could see it wasn't going to be a cold season, uh, we could see that there were some trends that we, we felt we missed, and so we were able to go back in and do a, a reselling of that. So we almost had a second market, post-market, and on that sort of stuff, um, we had to change our supply chain around. Um, so in some we had later deliveries, and in some we had to leverage a domestic supply chain.